For decades now, Baltimore has been faced with the incredible issue of gun violence and homicides that are just climbing almost every year. It's directly connected to the drug trade, uh, which is directly connected to poverty. The end of 2015, I heard the number 344. Uh, that was the most homicides in Baltimore City for the city's history. Hearing that was pretty disturbing to me. I knew I wanted to do something about it, but I wasn't quite sure what. I'm Amy Berbert. I am the photographer behind Remembering the Stains on the Sidewalk, which is a photography project where I return back to all of the homicide locations in Baltimore City. I go back on the one year anniversary on the same day that the violence occurred and I go back at the same exact time. That's it? Okay. I definitely don't look like I belong in those neighborhoods. Being a white female, I look like I'm either a cop, a social worker, or someone buying drugs. People have demanded my camera because they thought that I was photographing a drug deal that they were involved in, um, and then I show them that there's no people in any of my photos. Uh, we're gonna be driving across the city uh, to the east side. I definitely get a little more nervous on the east side. Uh, people in West Baltimore are willing to come up to me and ask me what I'm doing, and they, they seem f like polite enough. Um, East Baltimore people just give me weird looks. So a year ago tonight, there were two homicides in Baltimore that happened at exactly the same time. They believe that there was a targeted victim that was not in the home, but this woman was killed in the process. Uh, there were children upstairs when it happened. Hi. Good, how are you? Look at it, beautiful. Yeah. And her name was Tajay. My understanding, she was just in the house, right? Someone broke in and she was not even the target. She wasn't a bad person, innocent. And she had a daughter. She was fun to hang around. She used to, we used to go trick or treat with her for real. And she was just about her and her daughter for real, to stay to herself. She had a daughter? Yeah, she was only four. Three, but I think she's four now. Okay, that's that's awful. Jesus, have mercy. Um, so I am an artist in the city. Um, I am doing a photography project called Remembering the Stains on the Sidewalk. Uh, I go back to all of the homicide locations in Baltimore City on the same day at the same time and I take a photo where it happened, so. I just don't understand how all the young people only when it's their family member or one of their friends do they care that a life has been lost, but all life is precious. You're right. All life should be savored. Mm -hmm. Nobody's life is to be thrown away Here or come, disregarded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's just yeah. a baby. Yep. She's just a baby. She was just beginning her life. I know, I know. And um, how old was her daughter, you said, big guy? Yeah, her daughter was like three or four. Oh, my grace is in my Lord. Rest in peace. I was at my house. That's when I seen ambulance and stuff coming up the street. My homeboy Earl called my brother Zion and told him that she was shot. Wow. So it was 3614 was the house. I'd love to get this too though. Thank you so much. I want people to be able to look at these photos and imagine that they're standing there 
and that this person is dying. And suddenly they feel this emotional connection through this photo and they can see the victims as individuals and as human beings that, you know, otherwise we're just a number. I'm not trying to do, bring beauty to the world. I'm not trying to make money off of this. Um, I'm really just trying to bring awareness and understanding and compassion to the issue of homicide in Baltimore City. I think social media really has a greater reach for people to be able to see the image pop up on their, their Instagram feed or their Facebook feed on the day of, then that gives them the opportunity to pause and remember that person as well. I think that does a lot more than images hanging on a museum wall.